Not only did Donald Trump have a meltdown over last night's Democratic National Convention, but even Fox News had to cut him off in back-to-back -back segments for his incessant late-night rambling. So immediately after Kamala Harris wrapped her historic acceptance speech at the DNC, Donald Trump dialed up Fox News to rant and rave like never before and was so angry that, if you listen closely, you can hear him pushing the numbers on his keypad. She's going to give a tax increase of four to five times what people and companies are paying right now. Bro is so wound up that he's about to break his phone. I mean, listen to the agitation in his voice when he bulldozes the Fox News anchors with lies after they tell him that Kamala Harris is leading in the polls. There's been a huge uh, appeal and momentum for women voters. She's trying to pull that, the youth vote, the Hispanic vote, uh, the black vote back in her direction. Polls show that she's having some success in that at this point. So what are you going to do? What's your strategy to rebuild the momentum that you had with those voters? No, she's not having success. I'm having success. I'm doing great with the Hispanic voters. I'm doing great with black men. I'm doing great with women because women want safety. They want safety. And they don't have safety when they have somebody allowing 20 million people into our country, many of them very dangerous people. No, it's only in your eyes that they have that, Martha. First of all, crime has gone down under the Biden-Harris administration. Secondly, women, Latinos, and black voters are all in favor of Kamala Harris over Donald Trump. And in fact, the latest national poll conducted by FDU shows Kamala Harris beating Donald Trump by a seven-point margin of 50% to 43%. That is what losing looks like, Donald. But clearly, Donald Trump is not interested in facts or data or reality because here he is downright lying about basic economic statistics. She didn't talk about 70% of our people are living in poverty. There was that angry push of the button again and actually guys, the latest census has the poverty rate at 12%, not 70%. And by the way, the tax hikes that you plan to impose on the working class will only exacerbate the wealth gap, which Donald Trump evidently thinks is a good thing because here he was attacking Kamala Harris for wanting to tax the wealthiest corporations. And you know, she wants to raise the taxes on corporations, what they're going to do is pick up and move to another country, like the pharmaceutical industry moved to Ireland and they moved to other places. Well, now we know where Donald Trump's allegiance lies with Big Pharma and the big corporations who donate to his campaign for those tax breaks. Oh yeah, his allegiance also lies with dictators and foreign adversaries, which Kamala Harris did a stellar job of slamming him for during one of my favorite moments of her acceptance speech. I will not cozy up to tyrants and dictators like Kim Jong-un who are rooting for Trump. Because, you know, they know, they know he is easy to manipulate with flattery and favors. They know Trump won't hold autocrats accountable because he wants to be an autocrat himself. And as president, I will never waver in defense of America's security and ideals because in the enduring struggle between democracy and tyranny. I know where I stand and I know where the United States belongs. Now we see why Donald Trump was so on one last night. She crucified him and it sent him over the edge. So much so that after talking the anchor's ears off, Fox's Brett Baer and Martha McCallum awkwardly had to force Donald Trump off their show. They made it that you have yeah. to get 60, 70 percent of the vote just to yeah. get in. And you Mr. know what? President. In the end, the Democrats did the same thing to Joe Biden. They threw Joe Biden out of the yeah. party. And that's they why did we the saw same a thing as they did to our Mr. President, President, thank you, thank you so much, much for the time. Okay, we appreciate that much. live feedback. Right. Stay right thank in our live you. edition of Gutfeld is coming up. Thank you so much for joining us. Finally, the producers kicked the 78 year old adjudicated rapist off their program, only to have him call in to Greg Gutfeld, the next propaganda segment on Fox News. And once again, Donald literally had 
to be hung up on due to his incessant rambling. Uh, at this point, to what difference does it make? We're doing well. We're leading in the polls. <laughs> All right, Mr. President. Eight points down. Yeah. And they said he has to get out, and they basically staged a coup. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's all see how it happens, but I think we're doing very well. All I right. We're going to do very well. All right, Mr. P, I got to go. <laughs> Good grief. Call it a night, Mr. P. It is way past your bedtime. So eventually he did, but only after he posted a flurry of 40 plus truth social rants, spreading more lies and conspiracies about Kamala Harris and the Democrats. Not going to cover those because it's the same old drivel, but the most interesting one he made was a post that claimed he is now a champion of women's reproductive rights. Here is what he posted this morning verbatim, quote, my administration will be great for women and their reproductive rights, end quote. But Donald, you took away women's reproductive rights, which you bragged about doing on Fox yesterday. Remember? The gaslighting, the cognitive decline, and the desperation is strong with Donald Trump after the DNC. All right, to shift gears, we just found out in a new court filing in Pennsylvania that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is dropping out of the race and is endorsing Donald Trump for president. Think about the trajectory of his campaign. First, he signed up as a Democrat, nobody cared, so he shifted to independent. Yet still, nobody cared, and now he's dropping out to endorse Donald Trump, a guy who wants to terminate the Constitution, who wants to take away women's reproductive rights, and a guy who calls climate change a hoax. And to be honest, I think this bizarre alliance between Donald Trump and RFK Jr. is actually quite a good thing for Kamala Harris. All of the independents who were supporting RFK Jr. were likely doing so because they hated both parties. So when he endorses Donald Trump, he will lose those voters and lose his base of, how should we put them, very independent voters. Plus, with RFK Jr. out of the race, it will help voters see the race for what it really is. A binary choice between crazy and non-crazy, conspiracy versus reality, and delusional versus pragmatic. I say, let Donald Trump have the runt of the Kennedy litter along with his crackpot conspiracies. We'll take Oprah, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Steph Curry, Mark Cuban, and every other sane person who is ready to move this country forward into a new chapter of optimism and joy. 74 days away away from the election and my oh my are things looking hopeful for team blue thank you guys for listening to today's episode of the gen z perspective if you enjoyed it please subscribe to the show and give us a five star review on apple because as you can see the maga lunatics have bombarded the podcast with zero star reviews i think we're worth a little more than that but i also think it shows you how terrified they are of our generation thanks again for tuning in and i'll catch you guys next next time on the Gen Z Perspective. The Gen Z Perspective's theme song was created and produced by Pokari.